Teacher, learn, be safe. Design and environments. Conference at the Manchester School of Architecture. University of Manchester, December 0204, 2020. Christiane Wagner. Media and Digital Interface. Design, learning, space and knowledge. Hello everyone. My name is Christiane. And I'm going to be speaking to you today about media and digital interface related to design learning spaces and knowledge. For this analysis, three points are addressed. The first and most significant is understanding the process of knowledge construction in the digital interface. Next, the central pedagogies related to this process are explored. Finally, our sense of this dynamic of the networked information age, specifically how cultural diversity in its social, economic and political aspects are related to the individual's new behavior are addressed. The analysis also discusses the social cultural context of the evolution of psychological and pedagogical theories scientific and technological development and the possibilities surrounding the innovation and implementation of resources to construct data for virtual, visual, textual and auditory content. To reconcile communication technologies via an online connection valuing interactivity and hypertext, we must remember that, since figurative art, the evolution of representation techniques and the modification of perception stem from the influence of two visual systems. The first is based on images, then writing with the emergence of typography and, consequently, a sequential ordering of information and space. However, today in the global dimension of the internet and hypermedia, the individual relates not only in their respective societies and cultures at a given moment, but in the digital space-time relationship. Therefore, it is essential to remember that the way we perceive the world can vary from culture to culture, especially between Western and non-Western countries, because our patterns of thought and perception derive from visual language and writing systems. Thus, in the West, writing has conditioned us to individualism through sequential and linear perception of logic and knowledge formation. From left to right, as a sense of progress and evolution, According to Pierre Levy, 1990, the third form of appropriation of knowledge would fall in the space of new communication and information technologies. In this sense, my argument is that at this moment we can no longer identify all the latest technologies as oriented to the same purposes and if the same degrees of complexity. Many are the technologies and 
Diverse are their purposes and functions. They speak of technological advances can be verified in the unfolds and diversity of technologies appearing in recent years. Also, many other uses of digital equipment have become possible with the articulation of computers in networks. Thus, new technologies and to put forth chances of varied possibilities of action and communication. The hypertext, which appeared with Ted Nelson in the early 1960s and was developed by Douglas Edelman shortly before the World Wide Web, is now very familiar to most internet users. It's about the information medium's choice, the values of how and where the technologies are used to obtain information which process them and the abstraction of all the values that govern the social cultural system. Thus, from the new technical domains learned, information processing is migrated to the new medium, always having a new media integrated, as Imasha McLuhan in Understanding Media, the Extensions of Man, 1964, has already said, therefore, Aware of a social purpose and through the technological revolution, I analyze information technology as a choice in periods of transition. From a positive perspective, as it defines the cultural transformation and new direction of education. Hypertext is the online digital system's main language and offers autonomy for the user to navigate and access. Time and space become flexible. This form of learning through hypertext provides better assimilation of content and acquisition of knowledge because it is very similar to the functioning of our brain, which is characterized by network organization. Hypertext is the online digital system's main language and offers autonomy for the user to navigate and access. Time and space become flexible. This form of learning through hypertext provides better assimilation of content and acquisition of knowledge because it is very similar to the functioning of our brain which is characterized by network organization. Thus, with an emphasis on design related to online learning, we address planning predominantly online. So, digital connection through computers, smartphones and tablets. This analysis meaning focuses on the best possibilities for enabling access to online knowledge using information and communication technologies with results through the teaching learning process. It is in this sense that we remember the meaning of the term design, planning. Design commands the development of a project, the construction of a methodology, the calculation of experimental dimensions, execution process, and teaching learning with a single objective, planning, realization, and solutions. The interdependence of technical terms design and technology for didactic development is a complex process that cannot be achieved without planning. The need to design teaching activities seems evident in contrast to a preconceived notion that access to information leads to learning. There is a considerable difference between access to information and access to knowledge. It is possible to optimize 
online activities to offer teaching learning, which can be combined in practice by valuing digital resources and interactivity concerning content learning, time and process evaluation. Participation in the teaching learning process depends on various methods and strategies, including the tools and resources available and new technologies to develop teaching activities. The integration of information communication technology, ICT tools, in teaching brings many benefits, including increasing the motivation to learn. Thus, access to information is presented in various ways facilitate understanding, more possibilities for direct or immediate application, and the potential to achieve even more with collaborative and participatory learning activities based on interactivity. In short, the objective of educational design is to design a learning activity with several ways to represent the content. May valuing the formats for access to information, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, or the degree of difficulty, logical subsection, or complexity, offering alternative possibilities for decoding the message and motivating interest in learning through interactivity. Face it with these topics in distance education planning, especially online, recent studies addressing this practice can guide us on the educational and instructional difference. However, it should also be noted that institutions have different methodologies for distance education. These methodologies imply different ways of creating an educational program and organizing the activities that involve a course through ICTs. The instructional method comprises both face-to-face -face and distance learning planning. As for the educational design method, the activities are more focused on producing didactic materials for distance learning online. So, what are the central pedagogies related to teaching learning? The origin lies in the structural method and then, over time, in the transition to distance learning, accompanying the new information and communication technologies. The instructionist practice was adopted as a transition from face-to-face -face teaching to distance learning. Instructionism is a pedagogical theory that considers the computer for the transmission of information in face-to-face -face instruction. Constructivism, on the other hand, has been the appropriate pedagogy associated with constructionism in distance learning online, meeting the needs of the current context. Thus, the principal pedagogy theory for teaching learning is constructivism and online teaching learning constructionism. In short, instructionism is a technical didactic theory based on the machine learning of assimilation and repetition of information. The computer is used as a teaching machine whose approach is the transmission of data. Thus, we understand that the name instructional is associated with the idea of training, not with learning aimed at knowledge formation. Moreover, with the transition to distance learning, this pedagogy also becomes unsuitable for autonomous learning needs. The valorization of teaching learning is essential in the dynamic process through associations, experiences, construction, and the reconstruction of ideas through acquired knowledge and past and present relationships, and vice versa.
In the Pedagogy of Constructionism, developed by the researcher Simon Babert, 1986, we can understand that in offering self-learning, the emphasis is on the formation of knowledge. Therefore, it is necessary to provide the means for this construction through digital resources that comprise the media that transmits content and information, offering interactivity. It's not up to us here to specify each media's technical aspects, nor even tutorials for using in the different media or online activities. Instead, the focus is on teaching for knowledge formation. It is the abstracted understanding of this knowledge formation. Metaphorically, let, let us consider the information and content shared or transmitted as an element. A piece of Lego, for example. The user receives each Lego piece as the content, the information, and builds their object as the knowledge. The format object depends only on the user's will to apply each Lego piece, that is, each piece of information received, as the user finds appropriate. The final piece constructed with Lego by the apprentice is a metaphor representing knowledge formation. In a general way, it is understood that the computer is present in both the instructional form through instructionism and in the form of knowledge construction, as in constructivism. Two particular conditions in the form of knowledge construction are highlighted. One is that the user learner has the autonomy to build through the experience through the learning. The other even refers to autonomy in constructing an object of interest to the user. With knowledge built through learning based on their interests, the user learner is involved and perception and affectivity stimulate the learning. These two particular forms are constructivism and constructionism, the main pedagogical theories applied in distance education and the influence between these theories is reciprocal. The first was developed by Jean Piaget and the second by Seymour Papert. Both agree that through an active process of interaction with the word knowledge is formed and they differentiate themselves by just fine that in constructivism the learn depends on interest and abilities, while in constructionism the emphasis is on learning. Finally, the goal of educational design is to design a learning activity with several ways to represent the content, offering alternative possibilities to decode the message and to motivate interest in learning through interactivity. So, Thank you for having me.